Okay, so I want to get ready to uh, print some things on a 3D printer, uh, prepare them. Uh, a lot of uh, 3D printing vendors uh, will just require that you export an STL file. Um, so I'm going to show you how I can do that from Cinema 4D. I just have uh, a few things here that I want to talk about um, when, we're, when we're 3D printing. Um, this is just the letter A, and I want to show you maybe uh, three ways that I could set up the letter for printing and actually uh, what, you know, the, the benefits or the drawbacks of some of these. So depending on the scale of this letter, uh, uh, we really want to be careful when we're printing because we want, uh, if there's any, again, the 3D printer will print layer by layer from uh, bottom to top. And so we'll kind of layer on like this and kind of print upwards vertically. Uh, it, you might have an issue when you get to something like this, which is, it's almost like a bridge. Uh, the 3D printer has to cross this gap and there's no supports underneath it. For something that's really small, uh, you might be able to get away from it. But if this letter was quite large or if this was, you know, a, a very long, um, unsupported um, piece, uh, that wouldn't print right. You, you could actually uh, print support pieces to hold it up while you're printing and, and that way those would get printed as you go um, but that's something to be aware of uh, I wanted to look at uh, something like uh, uh, like this as well um, imagine this were a V or something um, we could probably print something like this um, and again if this is small you might be able to do this uh, but one issue that I see is that it's uh, the the area that's making contact with the ground or the um, the printer bed uh, is is quite small, and so one of the the problems you have when you're 3D printing is that um, it, your piece might not adhere to the bed that well. So uh, you have a better chance of success if you have more contact with the ground. Um, uh, so if I was going to print the letter A, I would probably do something like this third piece over here. Um, I would uh, print it out this way because because it's flat, I can get away with this. Now, if there are pieces that were uh, sticking out, maybe that wouldn't work. But there's uh, in this example, we're making a lot of contact with the bed surface, uh, and so it's more likely to stick um, and not you know get get unstuck as you're printing and potentially uh, fail the print. So uh, those are a few things to think about. Um, I'm going to go and just export this. So. Uh, what I can do is just go up to File and Export, and I'll just go to uh, STL and export it this way. I can use just the standard settings. If if I want to scale things down, I can do it this way. I, I should also um, note that uh, you know a lot of places they will they'll want your file to be scaled down appropriately. This uh, this is actually probably too big for the bed, and I'll and I'll show you that uh, as we go into it. So I have some uh, STL files. I'll just call this three A's. Uh, okay, so now what I'm going to do is open up a uh, program, a slicing program, which is going to let me prep the file for uh, printing. Again, if you're working with an outside vendor or some facility, um, a print lab, you might not have to do this, but I think it's nice to see this uh, process and to kind of understand it. So I have a, a Prusa printer, and I'm going to use a Prusa slicer, but you can actually use this slicer program to to um, slice for other, or to prepare your files for other printers as well. Okay, so this is the uh, the program that I'm gonna use for slicing. Um, you can see that it's set up for this Prusa printer, uh, but there is a way to add other printers and it's kind of set up for that. So what I'll do is import uh, an STL, OBJ. Uh, these are some of the formats that it takes, but again, I, I created an STL. Okay, so you can see what happened is at this current scale that I uh, worked at, this is way too big. This is the print bed uh, for my printer and it's it's extending over. If I'm working in this program, um, I could do something like uh, turn the scale factor down. I think if I did something like 20, yeah, there you go. It fits on the bed. Uh, you can get a better look at that. And, um, 
I'm just going to switch to the advanced settings so you can see uh, the file that's loaded in here. Um, and then what I want to do is hit this button slice now and that's going to kind of prep it. Um, and we can go in here and and see uh, how this is looking. There are different types uh, of uh, printer pieces or um, there are different, I guess, uh, categories uh, of features that we can print and this breaks it down. This also tells me how long this print's going to take, about 55 minutes. Um, you can see the overhang that I mentioned. Uh, you can see here uh, this could be an issue where if this is too big and it's colored blue. So it's highlighting this area. Again, it may print at this scale. Um, if it was larger, it might not um, because this is hot plastic that gets printed and it's going to kind of, uh, or hot filament, depending on what you're using, and it might uh, might drip down. Uh, one other nice thing to see is I'm going to just grab this bar here and, I, and it can show you kind of the, the, the way that this will get printed. Um, and when this gets printed, it's important to keep in mind that this is not going to be totally solid. It's part of the process is uh, that it's going to be, I'm just switching views here. Um, it, it's going to be, uh, parts of it are going to be made hollow, so it's, it prints a little bit faster. But this program will automatically do that. So uh, if you can imagine from the beginning, it's, it's going to print that solid uh, kind of foundation, and then it's going to start to print. Let me zoom in a little bit. Print like a wall around it. It's, again, it's going to be hollow. Um, you can see this is kind of the process uh, of printing. Uh, and for me, if I, if I was working on a printer and actually printing it, what I can do is export the G code. Uh, that has some other instructions that, uh, you know, I can also in here go in and edit some of my settings. Uh, some of the density and even things like picking the filament type that I'm going to be using, setting the temperature and things like that. Um, so uh, that's all the inform that's all information that will get uh, kind of uh, exported when I when I click this button. And um, I, I'll typically save it onto uh, an SD card, and then my printer will take an SD card, and I can just print it right off of that. I want to show you what an STL, STL file looks like um, when opened up in Cinema 4D. So this is that uh, file that I exported. And you can see um, it might look pretty similar, but uh, the, the geometry has been kind of flattened down, made editable. Um, it's all one piece. If we go back to our previous file, here you go. Uh, these are extrusions with splines. So if I wanted to kind of uh, keep uh, keep it in the most editable uh, format. I would probably keep it like this and save this as a Cinema 4D file. Um, but again, this is like uh, the, the STL file that was generated uh, from Cinema 4D. Here's another STL file that was created. Um, I wanted to uh, bring this into the uh, the slicer, but create uh, purposely create a problem that uh, is something that we really have to be mindful of. Uh, when creating a 3D uh, printed object, you always want to make sure that your geometry is solid and everything's connected. So if we're, if we're working with sort, uh, you know, sort of the basic set of uh, modeling tools in Cinema 4D, we'll probably uh, not run into this, but if you're uh, working with some sort of other, some other, um, uh, some other tools, or maybe you're, you're just going really crazy with them and, or if you're getting into the polygons and deleting and editing, uh, you might have this issue, which will uh, create an issue in uh, uh, a 3D printing uh, situation. So I'm going to take this letter, and what I'm going to do is select it. Um, I'm going to cut out pieces of it, because one of the requirements for a 3D printed object is that it's solid all the way around. So I'm going to select using this polygons mode here, and I'm going to just click on this side and this side. So you know, if, if we were just in 3D uh, Cinema 4D like this, this is you know wouldn't create some crazy issues, but I'm going to go ahead and export this out as an STL and then import it into the Prusa Slicer and show you, um, you know, what what kind of error you might create. So I I've exported this out as. Uh, 
an STL. I've uh, I've called it broken STL, uh, and it's broken A STL. And when I import this in and I go to slice it, I'm going to see something weird that happened. And that open geometry that was created is causing issues. Um, and you know this is not really printable. Um, <laughs> this is floating. I don't know how you would do this. It doesn't look like an A anymore. So again, this is something to watch out for. And there are some programs that can help you um, fix your geometry if needed. Uh, but this is a problem that I do want to point out ahead of time. So just be really careful when you're working. Uh, keep all the geometry solid. So just to review, when we get ready to print for, on a 3D printer, what we're going to do is export an STL. Uh, I wanted to go back to this example of this A that was way too large. Uh, one thing you can do is, is you know, if, if you're aware of the uh, the size that you're going to be uh, printing to later, you can work in that size. Or, um, you know, what I realized when I brought into the slicer is that I was, I could probably scale it down to 20%, and that would give me uh, something that I could work with. So what I can do is cl uh, click on it. And this is actually the STL file, so you can see it's selected. But you could do this with the extrude object. And in here, 1 is 100%. So if, if I wanted to go to 20% or a scale factor of 20, I could do 0.2 in all directions. Uh, so now this is the right size. I'm going to go to export this as an STL. Uh, and I can leave those settings the same. And I'll call this a scaled, maybe. Uh, let's go back into our slicer. We'll import it, Command-I. And you'll see that that is uh, the right size now. So this is a way that you can uh, get ready um, and uh, get ready for exporting your, your Cinema 4D files in, uh, for the 3D printer.